These lagoons really do stink, and when I was out in the Midwest and in North Carolina and Washington State, depending on which way the wind is blowing, uh, it can emit and move vast amounts of these gases, again, ammonia, methane, and particularly hydrogen sulfide, uh, which is um, what stinks. Um, you know, it's, it's the same that's in, in human gas. <clears throat> when you pass gas, that's what you smell is the hydrogen sulfide. And um, it can cause not only respiratory problems, uh, sore throats, uh, sinus issues, watery eyes, but it can lead to mental issues as well, depression, even aggression. Um, and people who live near these farms uh, have reported uh, mental health issues and f lots of physical health issues because they're breathing this air that's just so foul. I think the United States is probably the leading factory farm country in the world, but we're seeing these farms coming now to places like Mexico, Brazil, China, and extensively in Eastern Europe, particularly in Poland and other countries in Eastern Europe. So the technology is being exported uh, to other companies, countries, often by U.S. companies that have subsidiaries, uh, for example, in Mexico. Uh, so it is starting to spread around the world. A lot of times if there's oversaturation of the soil, or sometimes there is even leakage from the bottom of these lagoons. You now sometimes they're lined with clay, but not always. And those pathogens and those nitrates can seep into the ground and actually reach the aquifer, uh, which is used for drinking water. And if you have a certain level of nitrates in the water, it can lead to a couple of serious health issues. One of them is so-called blue baby syndrome, where it depletes the oxygen in a young child and they actually turn blue. And if not treated, it, it can lead to death. Uh, high nitrates in the water have also been associated with an increased risk for diabetes and, and other uh, ailments. I don't think the EPA is living up to its um, statutory uh, obligations as a federal agency in many ways, particularly when it comes to the Clean Water Act. Um, there's many times when they simply don't enforce the law, and that causes people to file what are called citizens lawsuits, which is a provision of the Clean Water Act. Uh, you notify a polluter 60-day uh, uh, intent to sue them under the Clean Water Act. If they don't fix it in 60 days, then you can go to court. Uh, the EPA should be doing that. It shouldn't be left to citizens to have to mount these kinds of legal challenges. But that's what's going on because the EPA uh, fails so often at the, their job. There have been successful lawsuits under the Clean Water Act, uh, which I mentioned in the book, particularly in Washington State. Uh, local residents sued, I think it was 10 mega dairy farms, and, and they won. And uh, what happened was they got money to do groundwater studies, which then proved that there were nitrates in the drinking water. Uh, some of these dairies, some closed down altogether. Others um, did do take measures to try to prevent less seepage into uh, waterways, such as barriers between where you spray the effluent and, and creeks. Um, and uh, it has improved the situation somewhat. Well, raising animals is very different than raising fruits or vegetables. Um, I've even seen in New York supermarkets, I'll walk by a supermarket and somebody will come up in a pickup truck and unload watermelons that they grew themselves. Those watermelons need no processing, no nothing. You just take them from the farm, you sell them directly to the supermarket. Obviously, you can't do that with milk, with eggs, or certainly not with meat. Uh, they, they need to be processed. And it used to be that there were many, many processing plants in rural areas, and farmers could actually pick and choose where they wanted to sell their animals. Whatever plant was giving the best price on the day that they wanted to take their animals in for slaughter, they could. But with this consolidation of the industry, these companies not only own the animals and own the food that's being sold in the stores, they now own the majority of the processing plants, which be, have become much bigger, they're mechanized, and they want, say, 5,000 pigs delivered at Wednesday at five o'clock. They want those pigs to all be the exact same size, the exact same shape, because the machines are calibrated to slaughter that type of animal and it's much more efficient for them, that blocks out the smaller producers. And if they can't get their animals to a processing plant, they can't sell those products. And uh, so it's a chokehold, it's like an hourglass. You have all this production up here, you have all this demand down there, but to get from here to there, you have to go through a very, very narrow channel. And again, that benefits 
these large companies and shuts out the smaller producers.